My friend and colleague Gary Simpson was staying at my house on Wednesday night when the shooting took place in the Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Gary is the pastor of the Concord Baptist Church of Christ in Brooklyn, New York. He was here to join me for a conversation at the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, which we shared on Thursday night, on the subject of building bridges between churches and communities. It's hard to do that when somebody burns the bridge down you've been trying to build, as Dylan Roof did this week. This is just so painful. Gary lost his brother a few years ago, and though he's black and I am white, he never thinks of himself as a guest in my house or me and his, I and his. Uh, he calls me his brother. And it was so hard to walk through this with him this week. The act itself of murdering nine people is heinous. The murdering of nine people out of racial animus is a hate crime. And when you do that with the very specific intent of saying that you want someone to be left alive to tell other people because you want them to know so that you can inspire a race war, that is terrorism because it's specifically designed to leave people in terror in their everyday lives, to make them afraid, to make them cower, to make them feel unsafe even in a church. Terrorism knows no color or creed. Racism is America's original sin and we just have to admit it. We don't want to. We'd like to pretend that we have moved beyond it and that People like Dylan Roof only do what they do because they're medicated, mentally unstable, or acting as a lone wolf, using race as an excuse for violence that they wanted to do anyway. We don't want to ask about his family background and how he was raised. We don't want to talk about the white culture of the Confederate pride that gives cover to continuing dehumanization of black people and is so embedded in our public policies that we can't even see it. We don't want to talk about the availability of guns unless we talk about how somehow if somebody was packing in that Bible study, all of this would have been prevented. We don't want to talk about it. It's unpleasant. But what is being church for the world if we don't talk honestly about these things. And people ask me sometimes, when black youths are behaving badly, not obeying the, pe the police, killing other people and white people, killing their own, why I don't call them out? Why don't I address the black culture, the breakdown in the family structure, the lack of moral discipline? And all I can say to you about that is that it seems arrogant to me to be throwing stones when I feel like I live in my own glass house. Or to use Jesus' image to be trying to take the splinter out of someone else's eye when I know I have a log in my own. And I can tell you, I have a log in my own eye about racial prejudice. It's not easy for any of us. This is the air we breathe and the water we swim in. And so I think the best contribution we can each of us make is first of all to let our hearts be broken when things like this happen. And then ask about how we ourselves continue to contribute to the persistence of this demonic state among us.